We all know that the atmosphere contains different gases and that there are four important gases, oxygen, carbon dioxide, nitrogen, and water vapor, that are vital for life. So Elisa and I wanted to see where these gases come from. This is what we learned. Oxygen is used by all animals. Body cells combine oxygen and sugar to generate the energy for muscles. A byproduct of this is carbon dioxide. Our cells expel it into the bloodstream. When it reaches the lungs, it is exhaled. Every time we breathe out, the air is rich in carbon dioxide. All animals breathe out carbon dioxide. The trillions of animals in the world add tons of carbon dioxide to the atmosphere every second of every day. Plants kind of do the opposite. Remember in plants, the process of photosynthesis? Plants use carbon dioxide and energy from the sun to stimulate photosynthesis. The end product of photosynthesis is molecular O2, oxygen. So plants take up carbon dioxide and send out oxygen. All plants do this. Plants around the world put tons and tons of oxygen into the atmosphere every minute. I guess it's nature's way of recycling. Pretty fantastic. But what if there are too many plants and they use up all the carbon dioxide? Or too many animals use up all the oxygen? Are there enough of these gases? Let's go next door and ask the teacher. Hi. Hi, kids. Let me put things in perspective before I answer your question. Picture a football stadium that seats 10,000 people. Next, we'll let air molecules fill the seats. Abundant nitrogen fills much of the stadium at 8,000 seats. Oxygen comes next at around 1,900 seats. Argon takes only 96 seats. That leaves just four seats for carbon dioxide. I'll zoom in on this little section of the seats. This represents how much carbon dioxide is in the air today compared to the other gases, just four molecules out of 10,000. About 150 years ago, there were only three carbon dioxide molecules per 10,000. We think the increase is from using coal, oil, and gas since then because they generate carbon dioxide during combustion. Most plants need at least two per 10,000. Below this amount, there is simply not enough for plants to grow. In a greenhouse, farmers pump in extra carbon dioxide. This makes their plants grow faster and produce more vegetables and flowers. Plants simply do better if there is more carbon dioxide. Plants around the world today grow better than they did 150 years ago. This map from satellite data over four recent decades. It shows how the area covered by plant leaves has grown. The green colors show where vegetation has grown by 5 to 6 percent. The purple colors are where vegetation has grown by 10 to 12 percent. That's huge. A little more carbon dioxide is making the earth greener. As to your question, are there enough gases? We see there's plenty of nitrogen and oxygen, but how can only four molecules of carbon dioxide per 10,000 be enough? In a volume of air the size of this sugar cube, there are more air molecules than you can imagine. The number of all air molecules is this big. And the number of carbon dioxide molecules in this volume of a sugar cube is this big. So you see, there are plenty of carbon dioxide molecules. Still, plants would love it if there were even more. It is great to know we have a healthy mix of gases in the air. It seems nature is adapting to a slight change that adds a bit more carbon dioxide, and it's as if the Earth is finding a new balance that supports life even better. You have to marvel at our amazing natural world. <laughs>